welcome to A Journey Into Yoga. I'm Susan Rubenstein. Today in yoga, we'll be exploring moving from stillness. So that's an interesting way of putting it. How can we move from stillness? Well, it's finding a way to feel settled within your body, to find the breath, and to find the peace to be able to then move into a stretch, a pose, a moment. So we're going to explore today poses that allow us to stay in them for several breaths. Now, if you're new, this might be a long period of time for you and you might become a little restless and need to change your positioning or your body. You might need to have a blanket underneath you. You might want to maybe have a pillow and that's all fine. So explore it see how it goes because remembering that yoga is a journey it's a journey of self-discovery each and every time we come to our mat to practice it's going to have its own personality its own characteristics so we want that to shine through so again having a space to work on would be your yoga mat a nice open space try to put yourself and this program somewhere in a room that you enjoy being as the winter season starts to approach, it's nice to do yoga in a room that's very well lit. So you have a lot of natural lighting come in, or if you're gonna do it at the end of a day, some nice lighting that's very soothing to the eyes. That helps to boost up our energy. Comfortable clothing. You wanna be able to feel like you can stretch, you can move, and not be confined in what you're wearing. Water, always important to have water near you. It's important for us to drink it. It helps with movement. It helps us to feel balanced, more energized. A little tip, if you start to feel yourself, maybe at the end of the day, just feeling tired, fatigued, agitated, could be because you're a bit dehydrated. So make sure to drink plenty of water. Then with that being said, we're gonna begin our journey. Always make sure though, if this is your first time joining us, you run this by your doctor. Just rule out any potential health risks. You want to do this safely and you should be fine. So I've crossed my ankles. You're going to tuck your heels underneath you. So we're going to draw energy into our body. Now just for the first few moments, we're going to find that place of stillness. So hands can rest over the knees or above the knees. We're going to close our eyes and welcome in the breath. So we welcome in the breath as it slowly travels from the belly, awakening the diaphragm, up through our ribs, underneath our arms, and then we slowly release it out. So finding a slow rhythm with our breathing helps us to feel relaxed. We can settle into stillness much better when we focus and listen for our own breath. So as we are still in this seated pose, we do begin to feel the movement again in our belly, maybe down, down into our hips, moving through our ribs, across our chest and under our arms. We might even notice how the shoulders float and down. When we are still, we are more in tune with our bodies. So we can also begin to then notice areas that feel tight, congested. Now, I'm gonna ask you just to open your eyes and carry the arms up. 
So moving from stillness, we reach up and then take the hands and rest them onto the knees. And we're gonna work with our hands, scooping out, we breathe in. And then we breathe out. So how you breathe in and breathe out is up to you. I like to breathe in and out of my nose. I know some people like to incorporate the breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. So it's finding what works for you. But it's making sure that your breaths can somehow match your movements. And that also gets you to slow down your breathing. Last time we come down. Now, as we touch the knees, we're going to gently awaken the spine. So as we move around with the spine, our hips are on the ground. We call this our pelvic bowl. And as we feel the spine awaken, bring in your arms and your shoulders. Maybe even letting your head follow the journey. Not moving too quickly. Just enough to feel the body awaken. And then as you find your way back to center, go in the opposite direction a few times. It's always nice to create balance on both sides of our bodies. And then as we start to make our way back to the center, let's take our arms up, inhaling. Now, moving into a twist, we're gonna turn. And as we do, we bring our hands down. We can look out, or we can then guide the chin over to the opposite side, letting the head relax back a bit, opening the side of the neck. Just noticing how that feels. Now remaining in our twist, we're just going to bring the head around. Then we're going to just start to slowly turn the head and look towards the back of our mat. And you can let your eyes roam around. So keeping the head still, exercising the eyes by letting them explore what you see in front of you. You might focus and notice something that you haven't seen before. Maybe you've been in this room hundreds of times and all of a sudden, by just letting your eyes wander, you've noticed something new. Now we're gonna carry the arms up, inhaling. Before going to the other side, let's take our fingers down and we're gonna change the cross of the legs. So just this helps to balance out a nice stretch within our hips. Making sure we have a nice clear space on each side, we lift up. Twisting over now to the other side, shoulders down, lifting up tall, breathing into our belly, and then slowly letting the head float its way around, over to the shoulder, and maybe gently relaxing the head back. And then as we remain in the twist, we're just going to bring the head with us, moving it around. And then slowly turning, starting to gaze behind you, then letting your eyes wander, exploring the scenery. And then with our breath, we're gonna come back up. Now, we're gonna reach forward. So we start placing first our fingertips, bend the hands. Elbows can be straight or you can bend your elbows coming all the way down, relaxing the head and neck. So when we touch the ground, it helps us to feel more centered. 
sometimes when our life gets very hectic, we almost feel like our head is spinning. It's nice just to stop and let your feet and or your hands just touch the ground for a few moments. This helps you feel more rooted and centered. It helps to quiet your thoughts. And then our fingers are gonna slowly lift up again, lifting tall. We float to one side now for a deeper stretch through our side. So hand can reach out nice and long. For some, if you have the flexibility, elbow might come to the floor. So it's what works for you. Lift through the chest. And then what I like to do now is to open the chest by bringing the arm back and then letting the head find its way down, gazing towards my hand. And then we'll bring the arm back around, lifting up both arms, we inhale, and then taking ourselves over to the other side. As the hand touches the earth, we float over. Maybe we opt to bring the arm back, letting the head and neck relax. Floating slowly up, we reach the arm, the hand, and release. And now we're just going to move some energy through our body with our breath. We inhale up, exhale, inhaling, exhaling. So feel yourself scooping the breath up into your body. Spine is long, hands reach. We float the hands down. One more time, we come up. And then release. Now, just take your feet out in front of you. And wind chill wipe your knees back and forth. And then we're going to take our legs all the way out in front of us. So as they stretch out. Now, this is where it might be different from me to you. You might find that bending your knees is a little bit more helpful in how you're feeling with a tightness in the back of your leg, especially with reaching for your feet. So what you can do is you can always slide a, maybe a blanket or a towel or a pillow underneath your knees. If you can stretch your legs all the way out, flex your feet. So either way, we're going to open up, inhale, lifting the ribs up tall and then carrying our spine forward. And as we take either the feet or the toes or the floor, just let your head find its way down. Sometimes it's nice just to gaze softly out towards our feet. Sometimes it's nice to let our eyes close and let our head go. So it's finding what fits you. So that knowing that yoga is a very personal experience, different on each person. Just breathe, breathing into the stillness, feeling now that our lungs are opening much deeper with each breath that we take. And with this fullness, we are then able to empty them out completely when we breathe out, when we exhale. And now reaching up, hands down. So we're gonna slide first the knee in. I'm gonna give you two options. Foot can just stay alongside your leg or you can cross it, feeling a little bit more of a stretch. Now, coming into a twist, either hug the knee or reach up. Elbow tucks right to the outside of that knee as we turn. So we wanna breathe. Breathe deep once again into our belly and into our back, but our hand that's behind us gives us support so we can lift up nice and tall. And then just relax the expression on your face, softening your jaw. Relax your tongue. Observe your breathing. 
Sometimes it's nice to have a still practice, moving from quietness, calmness. And sometimes it's nice to have an active practice where there's more flow, standing poses. Now we're gonna turn. We're gonna open up this knee out to the side so that the ankle, the foot, is just resting still along the leg. Now feel free to put the foot to the inside. Just want you to take your hands to your toes and let's move them back and forth. Nice stretch for our foot. Especially as we move into winter. We wear our shoes a lot more. We wear socks all the time. So our feet don't really get the opportunity to breathe. They're placed in a shoe, they're set in one form, and they really don't get to actively release their tension. So this is nice to incorporate into your yoga practice a couple times a week, or even just, you know, when you have the opportunity to sit in stillness. And then just massaging the bottom of your foot. So with your hand, working around the ball, traveling down to the arch, Heel. And then as the leg is still, just relax the foot, reach up tall. And then if you can, reach out towards your foot. Otherwise, just bring your hands back by your hips and create some space. This is really good to open up your hip. It's important to think about opening up through the hip socket so that we keep the hips moist. And what I mean by that is that the fluids of the body need to be able to flow freely. So yoga creates that flow. So we think of yoga as the flow of energy that moves the irrigation system through the body. So it's constantly taking those fluids and bringing them to the joints and helping us to stay where we're free from feeling stiff. We're able to move and to balance as well. That's an important thing. Now coming up, just gonna have you scoop the leg up, rock it gently back and forth. Maybe adding some circles for your hip. And then we're gonna take this leg out. Just give it a shake. Good. So then just readjust yourself. So you wanna feel that you're sitting evenly on your bottom. And then let's start first with a bent knee. Hand gives us that support. Either we hug or we lift. And then we come through our twist. Focusing on the breath. Feeling that the space open up your back body. We're moving with our breath. Take a deep breath through the spine, up as we turn. And then turning the knee out. Take the ankle up if the foot was to the outside. And then start first moving your toes. And then down into the balls of the feet. And then getting into the arch, so just kind of kneading your way into the arch of the foot. Yoga is also a wonderful way to massage the body. And then getting into the heel. So I'm on my feet a lot with teaching classes, so I always try to make it a priority at the end of a long day, is just to spend a few moments stretching and massaging out my feet. And then, as we just center ourselves, we reach up, 
Finding our way forward, now we explore this side of the hip. Each side will have its own personality. You'll notice different sensations. But one nice thing about yoga is that it teaches us to be able to be present when these sensations do arise. Just to be in the moment. And also understanding your edge. You don't always need to think about pushing hard and working too fast. And that's why this practice is nice. Just some slow, not too complicated yoga poses that we can do. The quality of the practice is important. And the time that we've set aside. And then we start to come up. We're gonna scoop this leg up, moving around through the hip. Rocking back and forth. And then let's take the bottoms of our feet together. So this is called cobbler pose. And this is really a wonderful way just to stretch out through the inner thighs and the hips. So all we need to do here is just bring the feet together Rest your hands around your legs, drop the knees out. You can sit nice and tall. If you feel like you want to add a nice stretch to the sides of your neck, maybe drop the head to one side. Maybe draw the chin slightly forward just to change the angle of the stretch within the neck. Opening the neck, go to the other side. Moving and seeing what works for you. So whether you have five minutes or 15 minutes, it's nice just to sit quietly each day and either doing a yoga practice with the poses or just sitting still and breathing. So we're gonna bring the knees out and give them a shake. So just to make sure that we feel good, we're gonna come around to our hands and knees. So again, you might find that being up on a pillow or a blanket is helpful. Set your hands out in front of you. We're just gonna do some cat and dog stretches for our spine. You can do these movements with your breath, It just feels good to move the spine through flexion and extension. We've added twists today. And then it's always nice to find a flat back, neutral spine, and then start to work with rotation. So how we move our spine is really important. I remember hearing someone say, we are only as young as our spine is flexible. And I thought, you know, that rings true. It really does. Now, as we come back to center, just rock back and forth. So this is really good, just to kind of give your front body and your back body a nice stretch. And if you want to stretch the bottoms of your feet again, tuck those toes under. So notice how today's practice, we really didn't need to come up and stand in order to take care of ourselves. We could do it right from being seated on our mats. Now, I'm going to have you take your legs back out to center. Just to finish a little bit more openness, an important area is the shoulders, the chest. So I'm going to have you just bring your arms up and then float your elbows towards your back ribs. So I like to call this bird wings. And you might have heard of this before. Elbows come in. I'm just going to turn the hands over so that the thumbs tip towards the ground and the pinkies come up. 
So this feels great to stretch the shoulders and open the chest. And just listen for your breath. and then let your arms come up, inhaling, and then exhaling, inhaling. Let's reach forward again, exhaling. Another round through rotation, just floating the hands around, bringing them back, turning your hands over, coming up, releasing, moving side to side again. Just feeling the flexibility in our body. And then coming back into stillness. So let's return our hands against our knees. Now it's nice also, whether it's at the end of your yoga practice or somewhere in your day's journey, just to sit quietly with yourself and focus on just you. Breathing with the breath, connecting with the body, and stilling the mind. So that's what the gift of yoga brings, is the opportunity to bring together the body, the mind, and breath in harmony. So I hope you've experienced some of that today. And as we move towards the end of our practice, you can choose to stay seated or lie down. But I want to thank you for your time and for sharing your yoga practice with me. And until I see you again, have a wonderful journey. Thank you. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.